Hi, everyone. Um, we all have heard about big company success stories, right? How Microsoft implements machine learning in production with Kubeflow and DevOps, right? The people and uh, the Apple people and his journey to the cloud native, the seamless customer experience powered by Kubernetes at Walmart, and uh, how David Shia almost gets fired from Spotify, right? But what about small companies in Central America? Is that even possible in this context? Was it already been done before? Well, let's take a look. But first, let's see what is what Central America is. Results that it is a geographic region between North and South America, conformed by seven countries, Guatemala, Belize, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama, with a summarized GDP just below Colombia, and with English level low as most of the countries in Latin America, affecting the access to information and education. Companies in the area has the fame to have a permanent limit budget, all and a small tech department, big resistant to change, dusty app over dusty server, and if it's working, don't touch it, don't look at it, and don't even think at it, because it can stop working philosophy. And there is a lot of comments like this coming from the community members. All that infrastructure, server, and development methodology, sadly, companies here at Guatemala are not ahead. But that had started to change, and today I want to share, to share my story of how is it to bring DevOps to a software factory in Central America. My name is Alvin Estrada. I am a speaker and organizer at Kubernetes Guatemala, a CNCF community group. On the last 12 years, I've seen how engineers here start moving to foreign countries and start working remotely for companies there. Even I spent good five years working remotely with a team on Netherlands. I've also collaborated with some companies in my country with his cloud adoption. And now I'm collaborating with one of the biggest companies in the region with his cloud adoption at DevOps journey. And this journey starts, of course, with a digital transformation. But this digital, but this digital transformation is at the speed of light. As in 2020, in a matter of weeks, everything changed. Companies around the world was in a hurry to move their business to remote and online first. There was, of course, a challenge, having in mind that most of those companies had never built a proper e-commerce before. The necessity for engineers and experienced people increased. Local banks and retailers had to duplicate their capacity on online and mobile platforms. Teams and technology was, already, was of course, not prepared for that. The necessity for a digital transformation was evident. Sadly, the necessity for a cultural transformation was not that evident. Teams inside local companies had to learn on record time how to improve performance, implement automatization, scalability, observability, and improve their English. Because of course, you need to read documentation, watch YouTube videos, and, did, and deal with cloud provider supports. Because of course, there is usually no Spanish L2 or L3 support available. As remote jobs was so popular, a strong human capital flight start as well. And it is not a secret for anyone that hire remote open a lot of opportunities. Companies start to hire more strong on this area, and most of the experienced engineers start working with international companies. But it also affects companies here, as now it's getting harder to hire tech roles, as the market demands for skilled engineers within, uh, as market demands for a skilled engineer for skilled engineers is increasing, but offer is too low to satisfy it. And it's usual to find you comments like this on post jobs. With those skills, you better get a job for a foreign company. Company you can earn a lot. But also, but it's it's also common that the adoption for new for new technology usually starts by someone experiencing experimenting with something he look at a tech talk or a cultural disruption usually starts by a small group of people. And that's why the community movement is so important here. Before 2020, the community was growing with every meet there was, a number of movements and community sharing about AWS, Azure, Docker, and Google was all over the place, even the Kubernetes meet meetups. Sadly, during pandemics, meeting stops and online 
events are not that attractive for people, I would say. And to be honest, many communities are disappearing or not longer being maintained. And new engineers usually don't know there was or is a movement on their area. So if you're looking at this talk and you are wondering if there is a CNCF community on your country, please take a look at community.cncf.io. Probably you can help the movement or even start a chapter in your city. Being part of the community helps you to know people and can be a crucial part of your formation. I would say big part of the culture cultural alt and tech adoption in Latin America has been done thanks to, to the community forums. I can tell this because I was there giving an online, an online talk about DevOps with Omer as main character at the, at the Kubernetes community at on Guatemala. When one of the assistants contacted me, said that the company he was working just to start with a digital transformation and required help to adopt and automate. There was some stuff already running on cloud. The company has changed his technology director just eight months ago, and the digital transformation was ongoing. They offered me a position to help with the cloud adoption as a DevOps engineer. The opportunity to leave my own Phoenix project was in front of me. And two months later, I was there about to know how is it to bring DevOps to a software factory in Central America. But honestly, I was more or less like Omer here. So once in the company, I was involved in a lot of meetings. They present me as the DevOps. I was going to help teams with new standards, security and cloud adoption. And please add the DevOps if you need help, if you need help deploying to the cloud. Of course, I had the support of the entire team, having in mind that I, that I was in a new role, just created because of a necessity com coming from teams. On my first month, I was invited to knowledge transfer meetings. One of the engineer was leaving the company, so there was a meeting to understand his assignation and application he was involved. I will never forget that when I present that when I was presented and the team mentioned that I was there to help with the DevOps adoption, he said, good luck with that, with that tone, you know? And it was evident he was already exhausted and looking for a child for a change. As you may think, I had a tons of, of, of other meetings, sitting there with devs to understand the workloads, building containers together and explaining more about what I do and what DevOps pretends. It was clear that most of they knew it had something to do with automation and cloud, but not sure about what else. The development team had decided to go for, Java, for, JavaScript, for JavaScript first and the main development language. This was because of its popularity, number of tools, and a good number of developers on the market. The teams for new products was, the, was designed to be conformed by a Scrum Master, a software architect, a team lead, and a team of developers and QA analysts. There was already uh, deployments on cloud, but uh, the stuff does not start by there. The teams was still struggling with the stuff they was getting from the business, as the user story usually looked like this, and the QA team suggests to start using Gherkin for it. The user story start to be well defined with uh, stories with a set of atomic features and well defined scenarios. If you are guessing which tools are we adopting, Basically, our services are done with Node.js, front-end application with React, with code scanned by Sonar, test done with Jest, Serenity, and Podman. Together with the cloud adoption and agile methodologies, the software factory was refactoring the QA process. I learned a lot helping the team to implement QA tools on the pipeline. It requires, of course, a training for the QA engineers to adopt technology as most of them was manual tester with a low or, or no technical skills. Deployment into the cloud are now done with Kubernetes and Helm charts. Our on-premise deployments on Linux are now done with Ansible and Podman, just because we want to be cool on. The monitoring and operation is done using Prometheus, Istio, Envoy, Grafana, and integrated cloud tools, nothing too fancy. During the implementation and adoption of new technology, a new elite team emerged and start to help teams with adoption as well. Some of them, some of them have never interacted with a Linux terminal before, and now they are configuring Nginx, deploying containers, and moving around with almost no problem. 
The documentation was crucial as they are now helping our service team to get in touch with platform and perform configuration tasks on production environments. We have also started with trainings across the entire organization to help with methodology adoption, explaining the problems we want to attend and why DevOps is important. I made my talk ab about DevOps with the Simpson struggling with the same problem we had and his journey to DevOps. With a strong inception of, of DevOps, it was culture, of course. But with a great power comes great responsibility. We adopt a number of technology and create a number of of ownership calls. Now we are conciliating what we have done and the technology we have with the security teams and make sure it can be certified, our tools and products. I cannot share a lot of info about the company, but this is something I can share. The company now moved from 10% of loads on cloud on 2019 to almost 80% of loads on 2020 time required to develop and test a single feature move from two weeks to a single day. Not just because the process and tech is better, but because the feature definition improve and, them, and teams evolve. And here, a couple of things we learn. Things need to be done in the right way. Small teams are easier to transform and manage. Digital transformation means team transformation. Team transformation requires investment. The transformation must spread across the entire organization, and there is no such thing as a silver bullet. And I also have a message for all my folks, for all my folks here that are still guessing if it's possible. Estamos frente a una de las más grandes transformaciones tecnológicas en nuestra región, y debes de asegurarte que puedes confiar en ti y en tu equipo. Posiblemente seas tú quien la próxima vez venga aquí y cuente su historia de ante toda la comunidad. And be prepared because DevSecOps is coming. But we probably can talk about this next time. Thanks. <laughs>